Howdy, folks. Um, let's talk about the method of images now, section 3.2. So the classic image problem is you've got a point charge Q, a distance D above an infinite grounded plane. That means charge can freely move in whatever on that plane, and then you've got a charge above it somewhere. The question is, what is the potential in the region above the plane? So you've got your plane that goes off forever in all directions. You've got your charge hovering above it. What's the potential in the region between the charge and the plane? How do you solve that, okay? Um, it's not just, as he says here, kq over r, uh, because q will, when you bring, let's say, a plus charge near a plane, you're gonna get um, some, no, delete that, minus charges building up in the region around the charge before you get settled down and you get your equal charges far away. So that means you're gonna have a little bit of a plus charge and a little bit of a minus charge there. So your potential is not uh, solely due to the plus charge. These minus charges coming up are going to influence uh, the potential as well. So we have to talk about that. But how do we possibly know this? Bloop. And so on. So what we have to do is solve Poisson's equation in the region between z equals, well, greater than z equals zero. So between, if this is the plane and this is your charge, and this is the z direction, then uh, you need to solve for v in the region above the plane uh, where z is greater than zero. And you've got a single point charge at some height z equals d, subject to these boundary conditions. And again, your boundary conditions are the key of every problem, of solving every E and M problem. So the boundary conditions here that you care about is that V equals zero when Z, when Z equals zero, okay? Because it's a ground and conduct, conducting plane, so there's no potential at uh, that surface. And then you also want the potential to go to zero very far away from Q, okay? So if you're really far away from the charge, uh, then V should be zero, okay? And these two things, uh, we can actually get the answer by doing kind of a uh, special thing. Because of the first um, uniqueness theorem, if we can specify the boundary conditions, then we can figure out the potential in that region if we understand the boundary. Okay, so what we can actually do is create a problem that has the same boundary conditions, but is a completely different charge configuration, and they have for all intents and purposes, the same potential, okay? And so that's what the image method of images is, is to create a simpler problem to solve with the same boundary conditions and get the same solution, okay? So rather than having an infinite conducting plane with a charge above it, imagine two charges, plus Q and minus Q, separated by a distance 2D, and it sets up the same potential. And we can easily write the potential here because it's this principle of superposition, Q over R for both of these things, Q over R, and the distance R here is X squared plus Y squared plus Z minus D squared, and that gives you your location for the potential. Okay, this has the same boundary conditions, V equals zero and Z equals zero, and V goes to zero and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so um, the potential of a point charge above an infinite grounded conductor is given by equation 3.9, this equation uh, for an infinite grounded plane and a positive charge Q above it. That's kind of amazing, okay? That's really amazing. That's that's it. That, since it satisfies that equation and because of the uniqueness theorem, as long as we have the boundary condition satisfied, the charge is the same for both these cases. That's crazy. Okay, notice that that is not gonna apply for the potential down here on the other side of the conducting plane uh, because this is only valid for this region because these boundary conditions only create um, the potential zero and zero very far away from it. Um, it does not satisfy the boundary conditions on the other side of it. So you have to, when you do the method of images, it's only valid for uh, the regime you set up that obey the boundary conditions, okay? So that's the key. All right, so now uh, for the induced surface charge, okay, on a conductor, the um, surface charge at a conductor is equal to the derivative of the potential normal to the surface, the rate of change of the potential right at the surface times epsilon naught. Um, and this is the potential right at z equals zero, right at the surface in, the, in that direction. That's what section 2.4 or 2.3 or something is talking about here. Um, so if we take the derivative of v with respect to the normal, 
Um, in this case, z is our direction that's normal to it. If we take the derivative of that, we get this mess and uh, the derivative of the potential with respect to z. Then that allows us to determine the surface charge density. Um, so the induced charge on the surface is just the derivative of the potential with respect to the normal direction, in this case z. Um, and that gives us the sigma charge density. As expected, the, value, the induced charge is negative, assuming q is positive, right? Um, then we can, I guess, calculate the total charge on the surface, um, which is uh, the integral of sigma um, times the some you know area, uh, and they okay. So he goes into um, polar coordinates here to replace um, x squared and y squared with r, and then we've got our theta and d phi and so on. Put that in there, and we're going to integrate um, around blah, 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 zero to two pi, and then from zero out to infinity, um, and you get that the uh, induced charge on the plane is minus q. Uh, how crazy is that? Which makes sense. So if you got plus q here and the surface infinite conducting plane, the net charge on the entire surface is equal to equivalent to minus q. Ha! So that's uh, the method of images allows you to do the same thing. Um, uh, this minus q, that's what it, this whole infinite surface has a charge of minus q, and it acts as though it's this, you know, 2D away from the plus q, two, plus q uh, charge. Okay, so that's pretty cool. All right, um, blah, blah, blah. All right, force and energy, so 3.23. If we know the force is kq1, q2 over r squared, or q squared over 2D squared, um, when we still got our uh, method of images here, so our separation is 2D, so we have 2D squared in the z-hat direction. Um, so, okay, uh, equation 2.42, again, I hate when he references these old equations, what a jerk. Um, equation 2.2 tells you that the work, um, you know, whatever, single charge, yada, yada, yada. Um, but it turns out that if you have a single charge in the conducting plane, like our problem that we have right here, the energy is half this. Why? Because the energy stored in the field is epsilon naught over 2 times the integral of e squared, uh, d tau. In the first case, z greater than 0, and in the lower case, z less than 0. They both contribute in when you have uh, plus q and minus q, but uh, when you have the plane and the charge, you just go from the plane up to the charge, so you have half um, the energy contribution. Okay, So that's just an interesting thing. And again, it's because that method of images, you got to be careful. Um, it's not actually plus q and minus q separated by 2d. It's plus q and minus q separated by 1d. Um, and so that's why that's the case. And you can see here by doing f dot dl um, and so on. Okay, so other image problems. You've got the charge, the sphere here. Um, and we can, again, okay, so point of emphasis is that you are not expected to be able to conceive of appropriate image problems, uh, analogs to problems. So like, let's say I give you a chart configuration that you should solve with a method of images. I do not expect you to be able to come up with an appropriate, simpler image charge setup, but I do expect you to be able to do these things. Um, so I could give you exactly this problem, a charge above an infinite conducting plane, and you should be able to solve it and explain what the induced surface charge is and so on, and what's the force, what's the energy, and whatever. So other image problems, um, another example is a charge, a distance A from a sphere, a grounded conducting sphere, what's the potential outside the sphere? Okay, and then what you do is you imagine that there's actually another charge, Q prime, somewhere between um, zero and A, and it's probably not on the surface, but somewhere else, and that will give you, that you can imagine that this is equivalent to a charge somewhere here. And that's what um, your appropriate image charge is. You've got a point charge, Q prime, let's say, at a distance R squared over A, and if you do that, it sets up the same boundary conditions, then you can get your potential there, um, and you get all your other things. Okay, so we've got 3.7, uh, another example, in this case, 1D, you've got minus 2Q, 3D, you've got plus Q, Okay, so then basically create exact mirror opposites of the two and, um, you know, go from there. Okie dokie, and then we got more problems. Okay, so that's three-point dose.